there, everyone. Welcome to Web Marketing That Works, episode 28. My name's Toby Jenkins, and I'm really excited today to jump into my show with Jim Stewart with you. Uh, Jim is an SEO specialist who's been working on the web since 1995. He shares today a fair bit of detail and gives things like a pro tip that has really helped him dominate the search rankings. He dives into what the missing element of most people's SEO strategy is and, and the thing that he does first with each of his clients. He shares his understanding of goals and strategy and tactics as really distinct elements that you need to be really aware of. And also he dives into what has worked really well for him lately, particularly around Facebook ads, which was really fresh material for me and certainly something that I haven't had a lot of experience with. So it was exciting to talk to Jim about that. I really hope you enjoy the show. Marketing That Works podcast. Come behind the scenes of real life marketing experiments and listen in as amazing guests confess the truth about what really works. Now, here are your hosts, Adam Franklin and Toby Jenkins. This is the show for people who love marketing on the web, and it's as always brought to you by our new book, Web Marketing That Works, and specifically the bonus 33 free templates that go with it. So if you're keen to download those templates, jump on over to Blue Wire Media dot com dot au backslash book hi everyone it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest today jim stewart i knew that jim knew the internet but i didn't realize until i started looking at your profile jim that you've been <laughs> consulting around it since 1995 jim yeah. was actually the senior consultant behind some of australia's first corporate websites including the racv the royal automobile club of victoria for those not familiar with it and the 1995 TV Week Logie Awards. That must have been an absolute cracker, Jim. We updated that live on the night. Wow. Yeah, that was <laughs> unheard of. <laughs> That's incredible. And you started Stuart Media in 1998. So I'm keen to yep. hear more, a whole lot more about Jim's journey. So you know, thanks very much for joining us, Jim. Thanks, Toby. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries at all. And before we get started, the other thing I noticed in your bio is that um, you have worked on a heap of streaming, live streaming of music events, and um, yeah. including the likes of sort of Gene Simmons from Kiss, Black Eyed Peas, Melissa Etheridge. Um, did you get to meet any of them in person, or? Oh yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, awesome. I even got the opportunity to interview uh, Sean William Scott just after he did uh, Road Trip movie. The oh, guy no from- way. Yeah, American Price. Yeah, so, yeah. So we were involved back then in with an with another uh, another business partner back then, and we were producing a lot of content. And so we were doing. I was doing a daily technology news show, which was uh, a video that went out to Yahoo, AOL, um, a bunch of the other big players back then. So we were getting back then. We were getting about um, three hundred thousand streams of video out of Melbourne. Uh, every month, and, uh, and and a lot of the content was music content. So every major artist that came through town, um, yeah, we did a. I, my cameraman at the time was famous for saying to to Gene Simmons, you know, you sound completely different to what you you do on I Was Made for Loving You, and he just said that was Paul Stanley. <laughs> So, yeah, that were fun times. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Good, good. So, Jim, if you can, do you want to give us a bit of a uh, overview of your business now? Yeah, so ne- these days we're primarily digital marketing uh, with a solid foundation in SEO. So what happened was we were doing a lot of content, producing a lot of S- uh, a lot of video, building some sites around that. Uh, and the business back then was mainly just hosting video and, um, and 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 creating other videos for other companies. But then this thing called YouTube came along and basically mucked it up for everyone um, by their, their free hosting model. <laughs> um, and so we were looking at what else can we do for the clients that we already have. And and we discovered that um, you know, we'd been building our own sites and trying to get them ranked in the search engines and had learned a few tricks back then. And so we gradually started doing it for other other companies, and it grew from there. And you know, we've been solidly only SEO probably up until about two thousand and nine, and then we started doing AdWords after that. And then it just this year we've really jumped in uh, with both feet into Facebook advertising as well. Yeah, right. Interesting. So, what do you sort of see? Is, you know, I mean, you've started off with the content and the streaming, and sort of progressed from there. 
through mm. SEO and now advertising. What what do you sort of see as your, if you've got one, an overarching web marketing philosophy per se? Uh, publish content, pure and simple. Yeah. It, look, I, I just had a meeting with a client about half an hour ago and I, I just said to him, I said, look, your content is everything. Um, and mutual friend of ours, David Meerman Scott says, and I see you quoted him in your book too, saying, uh, you know, you are what you publish. Uh, and I, I would say it goes um, further for from a marketing perspective in that uh, it feeds your social activity, it feeds the Google bot, and it feeds the uh, the authority in the marketplace for you. Um, I mean, that's why I've been doing a um, uh, a weekly video since about 2006. I do it religiously every Tuesday, get it out. And you, you guys are the same with the podcasting and the stuff that you do. You publish on a regular basis. Mm. But I not only do it for the Google juice, I do it so I've got something to share in social um, that that we're doing. And that then feeds the authority. You become the authority about what you're doing because you're the one talking about it. And if no one else is talking about it, then, uh, yeah. Mm. That's so true. And, I mean, in terms of your marketing journey, have there been sort of major aha moments in that process for you guys? Uh, um, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, and they come on a regular basis too. It's... Um, the the most recent one, I guess, has been the Facebook stuff and their new ad products. That was major aha for us when we started comparing uh, with other products out there. And the other stuff, with as far as content goes, um, I, I actually sort of fell into doing the video because I could talk easier than I could write. And and I'd already been doing the daily technology news show for, for three years. So I had a process down pat. It was easy for me just to jump in and do that. But it, it sort of the aha moment for that started coming to me when peop, when I started meeting people and they felt like they already knew you. And it was like, oh, right, okay, this is better than a blog because – um, it carries more authority for for a person when they read it because uh, than when they read it because they and someone explained it to me. Look, it's a bit like the difference between radio and and television. Uh, television people get paid more. Simple as that. Um, generally, because we associate more with a visual cue than what we do just with say audio or text. Yeah, right. That's a, that's really interesting. And so, what was it that sort of kicked off your weekly was it you know what what was the sort of flick of the switch i guess in 2006 that said right i'm going to do a weekly video cast or youtube um, i i think there was a lot of bs in the marketplace and there still is um, yeah. in fact there's probably more now um, but there was a, i've never been a big one for using jargon um so I tried, I bought my first computer in 83 and basically taught myself everything. And I, so I was never one of these TLA guys. Yeah. <laughs> Three-lettered acronym. I love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was never one of those guys. And when I went on, I, I did radio for about five years here in Melbourne on the ABC. And uh, I, was, I was very conscious of talking about the benefits of the technology rather than the technology itself. And not that, you know, everybody, everybody at the time was talking about features. And there was a whole move around the SEO stuff to, you know, baffle people with, with jargon and BS. And I thought there's an opportunity here for me just to explain to people that it's about the business. This, these are simple concepts that we're trying to get across here. Um, you know, one of the things I was very um, worried about at the start, though, was giving away the farm. It's like, you know, that, that fear that we I think we all go through is like, if I tell everybody how to do it, are they going to need me? Yeah. That's, <laughs> a, that's such a common sort of objection, I guess, even, you know, when we're talking to people about um, the web in general, really, and yeah. particularly content. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's amazing how it changes, how it, and you, you can't, I can't, you know, I've got some theories about why it works. Uh, and I think for our industry, you know, speaking plainly and simply 
And I never try to flog anything in any of my videos or even in my blog posts. You know, I, I don't do, hey, look, you know, um, you know, I don't squeeze pages and all those sorts of things. And, and I think that for a lot of people is a big turnoff. And, and there's a lot of that in the SEO space, um, you know, people trying to flog software, trying to flog, you know, link building schemes and all sorts of things. And so it was a, I think it was a point of difference for us. Mm. And and so, I mean, certainly our our experience has been, you know, the more we've given away, the more has come in, basically. Oh, definitely. Um, is that, has that been yours? I mean, has there been other areas that you've sort of tried to give away? Uh, you know, you've had the video as the core of it, but... Um, what other ways have you sort of shared what you know? One of the, one of the things I did in the early days is that I, you know, did one of those, uh, and I regret taking it off the site. Actually, I used to have a pop up on the site, and it will be going back. <laughs> and um, and I blame I blame social media for make for the pressure of making me take it down, and I succumbed, uh, and I never should have. But in, with that pop up, I used to just give away. Top ten tips, and really, I, I, in your book, they're not dissimilar to your SEO section. Really, you know, you know that, that's uh, that that's SEO in a nutshell. Um, what you've written there, and and that was essentially what I was giving away that those top ten tips. And what you find is that you know, as I explained to some people, you know, a lot of people like to service their own car. I don't. <laughs> you know, Put me in even your if, category. <laughs> even if someone, even if someone gave me a book uh, and some free videos about how to service my own car, I'm still not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I feel the same way about SEO. Is like I can tell a lot of people how to do this. Yes. Um, when it comes, if you think about it from from the service thing, the car aspect of it too. If you're watching. Um, uh, I don't know Top Gear or something, and they, if they had a regular motor mechanic on, um, he if you could get him to service your car, wow, he'd be the guy, right? Mm. And uh, it's the same with um, why I do the video and why I give stuff away is because you become that authority, and uh, a lot of people don't want to service their own car. They do not want to do their SEO, but they like to know what's going on. They like to understand who's behind it. Uh, and all those sorts of things. And we found with a lot of people, uh, and I met a lot of people at conferences and those sorts of things where they come up and they just thank me out of the blue, uh, saying thank you so much for your tips. You know, I got to number one for this phrase or that phrase. And um, and then, you know, you, you, you meet them down the track and they become clients because they've grown to a point where they just can't do it themselves anymore. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, yeah, I mean, that's, it's a, again, been our experience too is that the more, you know, People sort of learn as much as they can and implement as much as they can, and then they get to a point where their knowledge runs out or their experience runs out, or they just yeah. are so busy now with their own businesses that uh, they want some outside help. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. So let's let's dig into this SEO stuff in a bit mm-hmm. more detail, then, Jim. Um, I mean, one of one of the challenges I think is you know this concept of keeping up with Google algorithms. <laughs> um, what's your take on that? Ignore it. Um, I think you said that in the book, actually. I think you said something about don't chase the algorithm. Oh, yes. That is, and, and that's I absolutely our, our philosophy, yeah. Yeah, most SEOs tremble when they hear that there's an update coming. Mm. We start rubbing our hands together um, <laughs> because we go, okay, this is a good one for us. Um, and, you know, the... The the changes that you need to be aware of, I think, um, uh, come in not from um, how can I trick the algorithm now, but is how can I make my site better based on what um, Google's doing. So I'll give you a for instance in that. Back in 2009, um, Google Google's uh, then... Uh, CEO Eric Schmidt and a few other, uh, I think both Sergey and Larry may have spoken about it in that year as well. They started talking about how they wanted to speed up the web and things needed to be faster. And when you think about it, you start to go, yeah, that makes that makes sense. I'd like a faster web. 
And then, you know, they uh, there was a, a study done by Google where back in the back in the day they they ran tests to see to choose between having a hundred results displayed or ten results. And the reason that they they ended up with having ten results displayed is that they found out that a half a second delay in load time uh, led to a twenty percent decrease in conversions for them. So you know when you start hearing all those sorts of things in two thousand and nine, we started to go as a team. We've got to keep an eye on our clients' sites to see how fast or slow they are, because Google's talking about this, and and that's how we focus on um, keeping up with the algorithm, if you like. It's about what is Google doing to improve the user experience, and are we doing that for our clients? And that and, and you know that that goes for publishing, um, that goes for speed, that goes for keeping your site. Um, uh, squeaky clean, you know, not full of errors, a good user experience. So, but we ignore things like, um, you know, how can I trick Google? What what backlinks can, can I go and buy that uh, uh, Google's not going to notice? Um, I don't they'll notice. Wrong. They'll notice it in the next time round, though, won't they? Exactly. You know, I, I had a conversation with a client yesterday. Um, yeah, and I said to him, um, you know, the uh, uh, he said, but. We're not on the front page yet for for our main key phrase. I said, yeah, but you know, your organic traffic's up thirty percent. Your 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 leads are up thirty percent on the month. And he said, yeah, but we're not on the front page. I said, well, what do you want? More leads or be on the front page? He said, we should be doing some backlinking. I said, no, we're not going to do any backlinking. <laughs> and he said, no, no, we want to. I said, well, we can do backlinking. I said, but I'm not going to do it on your main site. If you've got another site that you're prepared to throw in the bin. Fine, we'll do it on that one. But if you're going to do that sort of stuff or if you're going to do any sort of um, stuff that where you think you're tricking Google, do it on a site that's not your money site, that's not your main site. If you want to go and experiment, do that. We're running, we're conducting ones all the time. But there's no way known I, I would do it on sites that are our main site or our client's main sites. Mm. Yeah, so true. And, I mean, do you consider sort of optimizing for any other search engines other than Google? We used to, <laughs> uh, but we just don't bother anymore. I mean, you know, you do see some some good traffic out of Bing, uh, and certainly, you know, that's probably truer in the US and, and parts of Asia. Um, and, you know, we actually see conversions out of Bing for some clients, which is extraordinary, um, like actual sales from Bing. But um, at the moment, uh, Bing is – hasn't caught up with Google as far as the spammers. So the spammers are, are, are winning the game in Bing right now. And when I say spammers, I mean people that are just basically just going out and buying backlinks. So um, if you listen to the people at Google like Matt Katz, he'll tell you that um, Bing was basically copying their algorithm. And uh, But then when the Penguin update, which was a, a backlinking update from Google that came out uh, just over two years ago, um, Google's results changed dramatically, uh, whereas Bing's didn't. So Bing has still got a lot of people ranking number one that have basically just bought their way there through backlinking. Sure, sure. Okay, so I mean, if if um, so, what do you see then as the most important part of search engine optimization for the, for the audience listening? What's the most important piece of the puzzle? I would tell everyone, and it's getting better now, but I'm surprised how many people don't have this set up, is get into Webmaster Tools. Have a look at Webmaster Tools. It's a free service from Google, um, and that's one of, that will reveal all the pieces of the puzzle to you. Um, what, what people don't realize is that it's, it's Google telling you what it knows about your site. So... And you might think you have a lovely site. You might think you have a wonderful site. But um, the problem is that Google is seeing it in a totally different way sometimes. Um, and that's where we always start with a client is we go, okay, we want to see what, what Google thinks of your site. So that's where you got to start. And then you move on to content. So, for instance, a lot of sites, um, they will have duplicate pages. And the problem with that is, is that it 
you know, which one is Google meant to rank? You know, you, you're splitting the, um, you know, you, you're splitting the, 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 the chances of ranking. If you've got the same page at, you know, multiple URLs. Um, your sign might be full of errors and you don't see that. You don't know that. But Google sees that. So why does it want to send its users to a site that's full of errors or is slow or is, um, you know, not performing well or, you know, there's a whole bunch of things. Or, you know, you might be, um, your whole site might be duplicated at um, more than one address and you don't even know it. We've seen um, sites where a, someone's been developing the site and they'll have it a staging at a staging URL and unbeknownst to the client, Google comes along and, and crawls that staging site and then the site new site goes live and all of a sudden Google sees the same site at two different URLs. So there's all that sort of stuff and that's the main area of work that we do in probably the first eight weeks is is all about cleaning up the index, the Google index, and making sure that the only things in that Google index is what we want to be in there. Right. And so the webmaster tools, do they sort of provide prompts as to what's going on and you know errors that are coming up? Um, yeah. You know, again, for the for the audience, for those listening, you know, what kind of information do they expect in there? Well, you've got you've got to break it up into different sections. So. You know, Google will tell you, for instance, um, what your site is appearing in search for. So you might think, well, I've got that with Google Analytics. Well, no, you haven't. With Google Analytics, all you've got is when someone clicks on on your result um, and goes to your site, you've got that data then. What Google Webmaster Tools, say the search query section will tell you, is it will tell you, for instance, if you know, you're targeting the word, the, the phrase car finance, that you've actually appeared 212 times in search that month for that particular phrase. You might have only had 10 clicks on that because you're ranked at number 30, but it gives you an idea of the opportunity that's there. Um, and you'll start to see phrases that you're ranking for that you didn't know, and you'll start to see where you're ranking for those phrases. Um, so there's the search queries area. There's the, the, the crawl area, which tells you how Google has crawled your site, uh, how often it crawls your site. So you might go in there and say, well, geez, Google's only coming to my site once a month. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not good. Uh, or you might see that, geez, Google's taking five seconds to download a page on my site. That's rubbish. Um, or you might see that, uh, you know, you've got broken a broken site map or um, you've, it'll tell you all about the duplications and those sorts of things as well. Um, and, you know, I tell people if you if you've got a if you've got a website built on WordPress, every time you write a blog post, you should be ranking number one for its page title, as long as it's you know not Viagra or something, within within seconds of publishing. Because Google Google wants to be on the ball. Google wants to bring the freshest, most relevant content to its users. Um, and if that's not happening with your site, it probably means that there's a problem. Um, somewhere along the line that Google doesn't like about your site and Webmaster Tools will tell you what that is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's a, I mean, that's a really great insight because I think I don't think people go back to that as a starting point. Um, yeah, I mean, we're in it every, Webmaster Tools. Yeah. Yeah, we're in it every day. Mm. Every. That's awesome. And so, you know, if that was the first thing that you did, what would be, um, what would be the sort of, if you could only do you know, one activity then, having done that analysis through the Webmaster Tools, if you could only sort of conduct one activity to improve your search results, what do you reckon, what would you choose? Um, it would be, and I'm not even talking about doing on-page SEO here or, you know, actually you know, writing up a piece of content or anything like that. I think the first, well, definitely the first thing for us would be uh, removing stuff from the index that shouldn't be there. And and quite often this is stuff that um, is, you know, I was looking at a client site today. Um, you know, he's got he's got the site at the W's and the non-W's. So he's got basically got two versions of his site in the index, www and without the www. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean that up. Or sometimes you'll find that a client has gone out and bought multiple domain names and they've got them all pointing at the same site. Uh, we switch all those off and just have one. Um, so it's really 
first and foremost, it's about starting with a clean slate. So the quicker that you can get to that, then you can get to the stuff that is actually um, makes you rise up the ranks, and that's the the content and how you optimize that. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so then um, final final tip on the SEO front, then like a pro tip for those who are really advanced and understand their search engine optimization well. What would be your pro tip? Oh, uh, a good pro tip is. Let's say you want to rank for a, a given uh, phrase in your city. A good pro tip I find is write three articles about it. So you write three articles, and this isn't a trick. This is just adding authority to your blog. So we did it with uh, SEO Consultant, which I think we're still number one for in Melbourne. Um, and we did it, uh, you write the first post. And, you know, you make sure it's an optimized post, right? So, mm. uh, like in in the ranking for SEO consultant, uh, going to number one from Melbourne, how we did that was we just said uh, the first post was called SEO consultant. That's what the title was. Uh, that's what the URL was. That's what the H1 on the page was. <clears throat> Wrote an article about why we wanted to rank for SEO consultant. Uh, then five minutes later, I published another one. And... I'd linked back to the first article, say, look, this is a follow-up to the first article because I just noticed after publishing that first article, we're now ranked at 227 for SEO consultants. So it was basically telling a story about the journey of ranking this phrase. Mm. And by linking back to the first post, it made sure that that not only the reader but Google could also see the interrelationship between the posts. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to the first post and I said, by the way, there's an update to this post and linked it to the second post. And I did the same with the third post. And I had so I had this good interlinking structure between the three, and every one of those posts in the title somehow talked about SEO consultant in a natural way. So writing, I think writing a series about something mm. is a good way to uh, get ranking for for a phrase. Yeah, awesome. Oh, thanks, Jim. That's a that's a great that's a great tip. So I hope um, hope the listeners put that into practice. Um, well, Jim, I'm I'm conscious of time. Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there anything I guess on the flip side? There's some things to do. Is there anything that you know the audience should be avoiding? Yep, um, avoid anybody that wants to do a backlinking campaign for you. Um, <laughs> That's avoid. a simple one. Oh man, it's one of the things we're always cleaning up. Um, the the uh, the the other thing to avoid would be. Uh, uh, don't like you said before. Don't think about the algorithm. Think about the user. If you get the site right, if you get all your problems fixed and everything else that Google sees with the site, um, just uh, just avoid thinking about what Google's doing, and just publish content on a regular basis for your user with your with your keywords in mind. Yeah. Cool. That's really good. That's fantastic. Actually, thank you. Um, okay, well, um, yeah, final question really is then, uh, you know, learning from others, who, who do you follow, who do you keep an eye out, whether it's for SEO or business or, um, you know, more generally, books, blogs, presentations, any, any particular favourites there? Actually, um, and this is going to sound self-serving, but it's actually not. Um, I got involved with a, um, a podcast about a year ago, I think, would be. Called Beers, Blokes, and Business. I don't know if you've heard it. Oh yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, so I'm on that, but I've learned a lot from those guys. You know, like half the stuff I've implemented in my business now is stuff I've learned there. Um, and I think it's a really good. And I, I must admit, I haven't subscribed to you, to you, which I will now because I would forgotten all about you guys doing. I don't know why. It's just this visibility thing. You don't, you don't see it. Uh, I don't know why I'm not on any of your lists or anything, but anyway. Yeah, right. Well, I'll fix that up for you. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whack me on. Um, but I just don't see it. But um, but it's just that thing of uh, the, so the beers, blokes, and business podcast is is basically eight blokes, um, you know, and we get together on a regular basis, you know, four at a time, and just talking about what we've learned, tools we're using, all this sort of stuff. And I find that's really, it's been really good. I've learned a lot. And they're just a bunch of mates that, you know, you now when you get together with people, if you get together with four or five people, you don't get really a lot of time just to discuss stuff. So, if you, uh, but, but 
because we do this podcast, we get into the nitty gritty of what we're doing for our businesses, um, uh, the sorts of things that we're finding useful in, in the businesses, um, and just stuff from uh, apps that I'm now using. Um, just even things like one of the guys um, who was in it um, was talking about, you know, uh, goals, strategy, strategies and tactics. And, I, you know, I heard that years ago, you know, the difference between goals, strategies and tactics. Um, and then when I looked at it, I thought, actually, that I should really apply that to SEO because a lot of clients would see ranking number one as the goal and it's not. That's a strategy. The goal is to get more business. The goal is to get more traffic to the site. You know what I mean? So that's a great way. That is so important. Yeah, and, and and it's stuff like that that I've just picked up from from those guys. And and look, you know, half of the stuff they say is rubbish, but you know, most of it's pretty good. <laughs> it's it's actually really interesting you say that because I I don't know whether you read that in in our book, but we talk about the fact that our goal was to be number one in web design, Brisbane. Yep. And um, and then we realized that, in actual fact, that just brought us a whole bunch of tire kickers. Exactly. Um, and it was it was actually counterproductive. Yep. While yep. it stroked the ego beautifully, um, it, did, it actually did nothing for us um, from a business standpoint until we realized that, you know, the web strategy and strategy consulting and, and um, speaker became, you know, a keyword that we focus much more heavily on because that's where the kind of clients that we wanted to be dealing with were coming from and that was a that was a real sort of kick because we'd, we'd worked really hard to <laughs> optimize for a keyword that did nothing but bring us a ton of grief in fact because oh, we, we were writing get, proposals I, that just wouldn't work. Yep. Yep. We have the exact same story. Uh, like for, for, I don't know, for eight years we were number one for SEO Melbourne and and the same thing. Just it's really just not the business that we wanted, just just tire kickers, and um, I think we've dropped back onto page two now. And and whilst it, it hurts my ego not to be number one, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it really really irks me. I'm just thinking <laughs> like if you spend time on that, how much time and effort do you have to spend on that? You know, you're up against a fair amount of spam as well. Yeah, because as Google as good as Google is, um, the spam is usually one step ahead. Um, you know. Or should you be focusing on doing these other things for your business, like getting speaking gigs, like uh, uh, producing more content that's of value to to your user base, and all those sorts of things? So yeah, yeah, no, it is funny. Interesting. It? Yeah, that's a that's a really important point, actually. Mm. Thanks, for, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, cool, Jim. And, and sort of what's next for business wise for you guys? Well, uh, we're we're growing rapidly this year. The um, and one of the biggest things for us this year is um, Facebook ads. Um, and people might say, oh, really, Facebook? But a lot of people don't realize that it, Facebook made some major changes. I think it was back in February. And the stuff that you can do now is quite exciting. And I'll give you, I'll give you one quick story. I've got a finance client, and he's spending about 50000 a month on uh, AdWords. Right. Wow. And... And he's paying, yeah, yeah. He's paying. We're not, we're not managing that campaign, but he's paying uh, about eighteen hundred dollars for a lead. Uh, now the space that he's in, yeah, that's 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 an acceptable cost for a lead because um, he's in the finance. He's talking about long tail, uh, long trail, trailing commissions, and all those sorts of things. So their business is they're happy to pay, you know, eighteen hundred dollars a lead via AdWords. They're spending about it's about thirteen dollars a click or something for the sorts of. I mean, you can imagine finance a lot of lot of competition there. Um, so in uh, in Facebook, we started a campaign for him. Uh, so far, over a course of a week, we've got ten conversions at the cost of twenty seven dollars per conversion. <laughs> it's insanely good. Well, and I, as in as in the actual lead is twenty seven bucks. Yeah, as opposed to eighteen hundred. I've, I've got another client who I got. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, yeah. you must be getting pretty excited about pushing some cash that way. Yeah, yeah. So I've said, you know, just let's just 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 roll it out slowly. But I think we're going to take some cash away from Google here. Uh, I've got another client. She um, uh, spent. We spent. Uh, I think it was thirty nine dollars or something for her on a campaign, and she made fifty seven hundred. 
in sales. Uh, the, the numbers are insane. And the reason for it is, is the, the core, I guess the core of the, the, the new product is these things called custom audiences. And it's the ability to target people that have visited your website, like remarketing, say, in AdWords, target people that have visited your website, target them back inside Facebook with an ad. Um, and I'm not t- necessarily talking about the, the ones down the right-hand side. I'm talking about the news feed ads and those sorts of things. And 90% of those conversions and sales that we're seeing are all coming off mobiles too with Facebook. Um, yeah, so 90 So it's it's... For me, it's a really exciting new area for our clients because it's like, oh, we could do so much with this. So the other thing that you can do, and uh, I recommend anyone who wants to do this gets advice from someone else other than me um, because it's a, it's a grey area. Um, so you can get what's called a, a Facebook UID scraper and you can go and target someone's page, for instance. Um, you could go and target, you know, a competitor's page and say, give me the UIDs, the user IDs of everybody that's ever liked this competitor's page. Then you can upload that to an audience in Facebook and you can advertise to those people directly in Facebook. Holy smokes. Yeah, it's, it's scary, creepy good. Um, but it it's, And then you can combine those. Like, uh, for instance, I've got a campaign going right, right now for a retailer where we're saying, okay, if someone's been to this product page but they haven't been to the payment page, let's do a campaign just to them, just about that product. And it's got a 2,500% ROI so far. Uh, It's just, yeah, it's just got another client. He can't throw enough money at Facebook right now, meaning that he he, he can't get any more views or clicks. He's maxed out all his audiences. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, and he wants to. We, we did a, an AdWords campaign for him. Useless. Yep. Absolutely useless in comparison. And look, and it Is it a particular I, style of business that it's working for? Uh, I'm trying to think if I've done any... Like is it B2C well, I mean, versus B2B, B2B or... No, well, I'm trying to think if I've done a... I don't, the only B2B I've done so far is for ourselves, but we're just really after... We're not doing... Um, you know, what's not selling anything via the ads. We're paying about 30 cents for a like at the moment um, to our page, which basically gets, you know, us in their, in their, in their stream. Um, but B2B, I'm just trying to think I've done, I think we're doing some B2B at the moment, but I don't have enough data yet. B2C is going gangbusters, I can tell you that. Um, the, uh, oh, actually, we are doing a B2B at the moment. Um but it's only been running for a week. It's got five conversions and we've spent $50 and we're selling a $800 product. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, but it takes a bit of time, a bit of learning and all those sorts of things. But, um, yeah, for the people who are saying, you know, you hear all these horror stories about um, Facebook and fake users and um, terrible engagement and all this sort of stuff. It's like, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. It's just you've you got to target people. I mean, I was talking to a client this morning. She was paying to boost her posts. I said, don't do that. <laughs> I said, we don't need to do that. <laughs> I said, don't boost, pay to boost your posts. We're just going to advertise to people directly with great offers um, because it's, it's – do you know Ed Dale? Okay, Ed Dale's easy. Australian internet marketing um, guru, affiliate guy, been around for – uh, forever, um, and he he talked about at Pro Bloggers Conference last year. He talked about this thing called um, um, where people are consuming the content. You know, what's the venue that they're consuming consuming it in? And he was he was talking about it in in relation to people consuming um, content on uh, a tablet or a, or a smartphone. In that, yeah, you know, it's it's a no brainer for them to spend a dollar ninety nine on an app. You know, it's pretty easy. It's lay back. I'm relaxed. If you ask me to spend a dollar ninety nine on the desktop, though, I'm probably not going to do it. It's too hard, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I think the same is true with Facebook with the ads. It's, um, I think, in, in a lot of ways, Facebook advertising is better than an email newsletter. And and the reason for that is is that I can I can upload my whole email user database into Facebook, 
and I can target them directly within Facebook. And I can choose how the well, I can't I I, I can't choose the frequency of how many times they see the ad, but I can choose to show that ad to them on a regular basis. Now, you think about email, all you've got is a subject header. You know, you've got to get them to click. Right? Well, the same is true that with Facebook ads. You've got to get them to click. But you get to choose um, to do a really nice graphic, which you can't do with, a, with an email subject header. You get to choose to um, uh, put a really nice offer up front if you want to. And you get to say, I want to, I want to show this, you know, I want to spend five dollars a day doing this. And I think in, in a lot of ways that uh, because of the venue that it is, it's you know, people when people are on Facebook, they're goofing off. Right. So you know, typically they're not working unless they're us. <laughs> but, um so that venue means that uh oh yeah, what's that? I'll yeah, I'll click on that. Oh, that's interesting. Um, as opposed to when you're in your email account, typically you're working for most people. Mm. Um, so you might see an interesting thing come past in your feed, but you think, oh, I can't look at that now. I'll look at it later. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Um, so, if, yeah, for me, I, 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 like I'm still doing my email mail out. So, Jim, any final thoughts or um, piece of advice, closing piece of advice for the audience? Yep. Uh, One of the most common things that we hear from business owners is that I don't have time to write content. My comment to that is, well, we'd really like to, but if you can't, uh, we'll provide a writer for you. And so anyone can go out on the web now and source themselves a writer and get them to write as them. Um, And it's so important that you need to make it an integral part of your business. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And I mean, have you had any particular luck with particular platforms to find a writer? Um, we've got a team of writers who that we pay a premium for. But one of the things that the one of the ways that we found them was um, through the um, jobs dot Okay, gotcha. Oh, great, yeah. great point. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll add all of these links in the show notes, Jim. So. Um, Thanks for that. And um, how can people connect with you then, Jim? Well, probably the easiest way is on Twitter, uh, at Jim Boot, or, you know, they he- head across to the site. So Jim Boot is J-I-M-B-O-O-T. Yep. And uh, if they want to hit me up direct, or if they uh, want to watch the, the videos, the video blogs at stuartmedia.com.au. Mm-hmm. No worries. Well, I'll, I'll make sure those are in the, uh, in the notes as well for those who are keen to follow up. Backlinks. Woo-hoo. What's that? <laughs> Backlinks. Backlinks. <laughs> yeah, Jim, thank you so much. I really appreciate um, appreciate the chat and you sharing the advice as always. So thank you very much. Thanks, Toby, and well done on the book, by the way. Oh, thanks, mate. Cheers. Speak soon. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. And as always, jump on over to bluewiremedia.com.au backslash book if you'd like to access those 33 free templates, including an SEO planning template. And enjoy. Thanks again. Bye.